What's up guys, this is Keir from RugbyStrengthCoach.com Behind me I've got uh, Sunny Rose Bay in Sydney Got a visitor in my house at the moment so um, had to come outside to do some videos so I thought I'd go for a nice location So today's post is all about books which changed my career both training books and non-training books and in this post I'm going to give you a list of my top 10 plus or minus a couple of bonus mentions of books and why they've been so important to my career and helping me develop as a coach and a, as a person So. I'll start with the training books. Number one on this list would be Ultimate MMA Conditioning by Joel Jameson. Check out Joel's website, 8weeksout.com, if you want to pick it up. Uh, the reason it changed my career was because prior to reading that book, I'd adopted what I call the traditional rugby approach, which was uh, run till you puke. If it hurts, it must be working. If some is good, more is better. And if you look at the science and uh, the kind of outline that Joel gives in this book, you'll see that's not the case and it's not supported by the research. And his manual, even though it's designed for MMA, the energy system demands are quite similar between the two sports. I found it immensely helpful for rugby and I pretty much use that step-by-step -step approach even now um, in my career, so pick it up. Number two would be Special Strength Training Manual for Coaches by Natalia and Yuri Verkashansky. And the reason this changed my career was because uh, if you look at the research that they cite in this book, you'll see that for elite athletes, um, strength and power ultimately aren't that important. It will take you only so far in your career when there's a high degree of transfer from general movements to specific on-field movements. Um, beyond that phase of the career, which as I mentioned in a video last week is about the first two years of training, you need to start developing uh, power output in highly specific exercises. And this is according to the dynamic correspondence criteria that Yuri Verkashansky outlines in the book. And the reason it's been so helpful for me is because this book is basically the blueprint that you need to adopt in building the bridge from uh, strength-based lifts to power output on the field. And that's ultimately uh, the only way to have a successful program is when you improve performance on the field. Number three on this list would be Fundamentals and Basics of Advanced Athletic Training by Vladimir Isserin. And the reason I like it is because, um, you know, my opinion, and that's one that I've stolen from a lot of people, is that basically sports science, the Soviets cracked it by about 1950, 1960. And Isserin is a Soviet-era sports scientist who maps out his entire strategy for improving uh, elite uh, elite athletic performance in a number of different sports and it's the most digestible and the most um, concise and the least dry of all of the, the other texts. Not as dry as, for example, Verkashansky's earlier work um, or, uh, let me think, a Natalie Bondachuk or maybe Matt Vair. Those books are friggin' difficult to read. However, I'd still recommend you check them out, particularly uh, Bondachuk, because that continues the similar theme uh, of transfer that's mentioned throughout Verkashansky's book. Number four would be Speed Trap by Charlie Francis. Number one, uh, I would say just read it because it's a fantastic read and it gives you an insight into what kind of training and what kind of coaching goes into uh, achieving a gold medal in the 100 meters in the Olympics. And um, I don't think there's been many books written about that and certainly not a book about those circumstances where the guy didn't just break the world record, he smashed it and then obviously got stripped of his gold medal for bullshit reasons. Uh, but number two is that it's kind of by accident one of the greatest coaching books ever written. And that's because throughout the book, Charlie Francis is giving you all these different little nuggets of um, how to train speed and how to develop world-class speed in your athletes. And honestly, I've probably learned more from that book than most coaching courses that I've taken on how to, to run fast. So if you're new to Charlie Francis, that's a great book to take. To, to take your first step because it's a super simple read. You're going to learn a ton and also it's going to be the springboard for introducing you to his materials and his website at charliefrancis.com. Number five in training books would be, um, I'm going to say, 5 through one for football by Jim Wendler and Bob Eilenfeld. And the, one of the reasons that I'm such a big fan of 5 through one uh, in general, let alone the football version, is because it's a system of training. And I think if you want to produce uh, repeatable results with your athletes, or if you are a, a head of department, you're going to have interns and staff underneath you that you're hoping to uh, replicate what you're doing, you need a system. And that's the best thing about 531. 531 is a system, uh, it's really simple if you've got large numbers of groups, you just pump in the numbers that you've got in testing and it pumps out the next uh, how many, four, eight, 12 weeks of training that you can then use, uh, and more importantly, it works. And 
another reason I really like it is because um, Bob Islandfelt, who uh, prior to his death a couple of years ago, was a, a friend of mine. I was lucky enough to know him. He was, you know, in the trenches, uh, high level, high school American football coach, and it was great because he took the 5-3-1 principles and showed how they fit into uh, a program of training for a field-based sport, which is not identical to rugby, but very, very similar. We all have to sprint, change direction, jump. Um, you could argue there's some differences with the energy system profile, but there's still a ton of similarities between the two, and you can take a ton away from it if you're trying to learn how to take a, a strength training program and fit it into the wider program for your athletes, which is where a lot of, of strength training or other training books fall down, in my opinion. Bonus book number six is Why Zebras Never Get Ulcers by Dr. Robert Sapolsky. Now, this is not strictly speaking a training book. It's actually a popular science book, a biology book about the stress response. Now, why is this important to training? Um, because if you read the book, once you read that, you'll understand that everything that we experience in life, uh, especially within sport, is stress. And once you understand that, you realize that training is not just a program written on a bit of paper. It has to be a living, breathing, evolving uh, plan that fluctuates according to everything else that's going on in terms of daily stress. And once you do that, I think, uh, definitely I did, you'll see a massive improvement in the performance of your athletes and a massive reduction in uh, the amount of injuries that they get. And uh, network aside, which is obviously the mo most important thing, if you can do those two things with any of the athletes that you're working with, it's gonna say good things about you as a coach and uh, hopefully advance your career. Now let's move on to non-training books. Number one is got to be How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. I said uh, previously that network is the number one thing that you need to do if you want to get a job in strength and conditioning and advance your career. And How to Win Friends and Influence People is basically the way to go about it. It's not an underhand book. Um, basically, it's just a manual in how to be a good person and how to be valuable to people and how to make them feel good. And to steal a quote from Zig Ziglar, if you just give enough people what they want in life, sooner or later they'll help you get what you want. And that book's been immensely helpful to me in learning how to do that. Non-training book number two is Never Eat Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. And this book 100% changed my life and my career for the better because it woke me up to the value of relationships and network in getting ahead in life and uh, getting to where you want to be in your career. And that's because early on in my career there were a couple of occasions where I was on the wrong end of uh, a couple of decisions where the job went not to somebody who was necessarily better qualified, or that's what I like to tell myself. Um, they had connections with a person who was appointing the job. So I decided after that happened those uh, two or three times that from now on I'm not going to be the guy with the qualifications and no job. I'm going to try and be the guy with the network getting given the job. Uh, obviously with the qualifications as well because like I like to tell people, who you know gets you through the door, what you know keeps you there. And um, I can tell you a couple of examples of people in the industry who've got given jobs and uh, have not lasted. So check that out and make sure you're, uh, you're working just as hard on your network as you are on your skill set and knowledge as a coach. I'm on training book number three, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Uh, this is a massively important book for me, not because I want to work or expect to work for our work week, because there's no such thing in strength and conditioning, try 60. Um, it's an important book because it teaches you the value of systems and automation. Like I said earlier, if you want a successful program, you have to have repeatable results. Um, to get repeatable results, you have to have a system so that you know whenever you put athletes in one end, you get results coming out the other end. That's um, the biggest thing that I took away from the book, but also it's been particularly helpful in um, in the business aspect of what I do and we can we can talk about this in another video but basically if you're in SNC you need to be doing business stuff for yourself because either you're so unimportant you're not going to get any money or you're so important you can get fired very quickly so you need uh, a backup plan in terms of business. Book number four is Mastery by Robert Greene. Um, Robert Greene writes some great books so uh, 48 Laws of Power he also wrote a pretty good one with 50 Cent which I quite like. Uh, but I chose Mastery because it's basically a case study of all of, um, not all of them, but a, a huge amount of masters in their field from across the ages. And what Robert Greene's tried to do in this book is look at the, the common themes which unite them. And I read that and tried to take away from, from that book um, things that I could try and improve in my own life. So for example, 
um, being the dumbest person in the room and having a mentor and having a, a big master plan and never being afraid to fail and also having a really good network and stuff like that. Um, so you'll, you'll take that away from that book and it's also extremely entertaining. Um, if you want to feel a bit more gangster, check out The 50th Law with uh, 50 Cent, which is also a great book. Final non-training book is Checklist Manifesto by Atoll Gawande. This book I read on the recommendation of Mladen from Complementary Training and it's been an absolutely fantastic book. It's by a guy named Atul Gawande who's a surgeon in the USA and does a lot of work for the World Health Organization. It changed my career because it basically continued the theme of what Tim Ferriss talks about in 4 Hour Work Week of uh, systems and automation wherever possible and it lays out the step-by-step -step approach that you need to take to make sure that you get replic uh, repeatable, uh, replicable results um, in whatever field you're in. So to give you an idea of how we're using this within Argentina, uh, every exercise that we, that we teach now, major exercises, for example, acceleration, top speed, um, change of direction, squat, bench, dead, chin up, overhead press, we have a checklist now. Uh, we have an A5 checklist that we give to every single coach for that exercise and on one side we have a picture of what the exercise is supposed to look like with the key um, coaching points and then the other side of that we have the key information that the coach needs for the progression that we're going to use. And the goal behind this, this checklist structure is that in a big country like Argentina with all the different teams that we work with you know, from Pumas down to under 18s, um, men and women, 7s and 15s, um, that whatever uh, team they go up or down into, whichever high performance center they go to, whichever coach they're in front of, we know that we're going to deliver exactly the same coaching um, to those athletes and hopefully get the same results out. Um, now, not only does that ensure quality, it also gives you a real good platform to test um, new ideas within your coaching program. If you don't have that structure in there, uh, you're not going to be able to test and actually know that the thing you're testing is having and the, the Checklist Manifesto has been a massive um, part in helping us to do that. And I think if, you, if you're, definitely if you're in management, you have coaches underneath you, you're trying to clone yourself, that's one to check out. But even not, you know, even if you're an individual coach or a, a, a more junior coach, having a checklist is gonna give you um, that platform that you need to develop and, and change things throughout your program. And in a sentence, if it's good enough for uh, surgeons, international airlines, and uh, major construction projects, it's good enough for us in SNC. Now, if you want to learn a bit more about the approach that I take in rugby strength and conditioning, just go to rugbystrengthcoach.com slash crash hyphen course, and you can opt in to the 15 part uh, video crash course on strength and conditioning that I offer for free on the site. Uh, it's about a three to five minute video, gets sent to your inbox every single day, and it will kind of map out the, uh, the broad philosophy that I have for SSC. Uh, if you want to check out any more videos, make sure you go to www.rugbystrengthcoach.com slash blog. As always, comments, likes, shares, appreciated. See you next time.